The first and number one thing that they don't tell you when you're about to move abroad is how safe it is in other countries. A big worry of my friends and family when I started traveling at 23 years old by myself was safety. They'd seen Taken, they'd seen Locked Up Abroad, and they just had these ideas in their head that you might get kidnapped, ISIS is out there, sex trafficking. I mean, I, mean, I am pretty sexy, but I've never felt like I was going to get abducted or anything like that. It's much safer in a lot of places outside of the United States, believe it or not. Here's the top 10 safest countries in the world right now. And the United States is not one of them. In fact, I had to scroll and scroll and scroll until I got to the United States, which was ranked number 128 in the world as far as safety goes, in between South Africa and Saudi Arabia. And that's according to the World Peace Index. The United States is not your safest bet. You're a lot safer a lot of times leaving home. It's actually funny, one of the countries in the top 10 safest places I actually got robbed in uh, on my first day, the Czech Republic, but different story. Anyways, what if you get hurt abroad? This is something also my mother worried about. What if you sprain your ankle or, you know, get a cut? Don't worry, mom, there are hospitals all around the world. And believe it or not, a lot of these doctors are trained in the United States or in Europe. So they've got all the best practices, but you won't go broke going to visit them. Healthcare costs have soared in the United States, and this is one of the biggest issues right now, but abroad prices are still really affordable. Just know that if you break your teeth, breaking open a bottle of beer, which I told you was a bad idea, trying to impress that girl, don't worry. You can go to the dentist and they will fix your tooth for a fraction of the price that it would cost you back in the States. The third point is also related to money, and that's how much of it you can save and earn. If you live in a place like, let's say, Southeast Asia, or Latin America and you can earn 20 to $25 an hour and just work 20 hours a week, you can save up to $1,000 a month. How do I know? It's because I'm currently doing it right now. I live in Southeast Asia or East Asia actually, and I'm able to save 1,000 US dollars and still live in an awesome apartment, go to the gym, have my Netflix account, all that good stuff. You can save a ton of money. And the other thing is, taxes. I'll go into this in another video if you guys would like me to. Just type in the comments tax abroad. If I get enough comments, I will make a video about taxes and what you're responsible for abroad. What I will say though is you should file your taxes while living abroad if you can, but as long as you're earning us under a certain amount of income and you spend less than a certain amount of time in the United States, you should not be responsible to pay any taxes back home. If you are working above the table, you will have to pay taxes to the government, but the government will give you almost 100% of those taxes back when it comes for tax returns. It's basically a savings account for you, a forced savings account, but Sometimes those are good for us. Number four, if you stay in a place long enough, you can get permanent residency or even become a citizen. Something I never really thought of when I started this journey of living abroad was having a second passport can add a lot of benefits to your lifestyle. That will allow you to go to certain other countries. Or if you've got a permanent residency in, that allows you to claim that as your home country for tax purposes and also opens up bank loans and buying land abroad and things like that. Number five, something that I'd never heard about until actually I graduated from college was the working holiday visa. There are five countries that Americans can go to on a working holiday, which allows you to go live in one of those countries and basically have all the rights of a citizen to go out and seek work. And you can earn and save a lot of money doing this. Those five countries are Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, and Ireland. You can go live and work abroad in those countries just by filling out an application online and maybe sending a couple hundred dollars and they will give you a visa to come and look for work. And number six. Now, so far up until this point, most of the points about living abroad have been good points. Like, yeah, you're going to earn more money. You're going to be safer, etc., etc. But number six is not such a good point. This is where you kind of lose money and that's visa runs. People don't really tell you too much about visa runs unless they've lived abroad themselves. In places like Vietnam or Cambodia or Thailand or even Colombia, if you stay longer than a certain amount of time, you will have to eventually do a visa run, which means leave the country to a neighboring country or to wherever you can go and stay out of the country for a certain amount of time until they can approve another visa for you to come 
come back in. This can be very costly and eliminate some of those savings that I was talking about in point number three, because you're gonna have to spend $200 on a flight, $100 on your Airbnb, pay for food. This will cost you money every time you have to do it. Sometimes it's as much as every three months, and sometimes you get a little bit luckier and it's every six months, but visa runs will cost you money. So this is a point that should not be forgotten when moving abroad. The final point on this journey to what they never tell you about when you're moving abroad is this, loneliness and homesickness. I know what you're thinking. Um, I moved out of state when I was 18 years old for college and I was a Kappa Kappa Gamma and I was never homesick or lonely. I don't know why I threw the Kappa Kappa Gamma part in there, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is moving out of state or across the country, it does present some differences, but it's a lot different when you move abroad because time zones are a lot more drastic. For example, if you move from Indiana and you move to Australia, you are waking up when your friends and family are going to bed and vice versa. It can be really, really difficult to coordinate live chats with your family members or significant others while living abroad. And this kills a lot of people. Usually what ends up happening is, it doesn't kill people literally. This really puts a strain on a lot of people emotionally. Either you have to stay up really late in order to talk to your friends and family back home at a reasonable hour or vice versa. So it really limits the contact that you have with back home. The other point besides just time zones is culturally. Moving from Ohio to Arizona, yeah, there is a huge cultural difference, but there's a lot of things that link the two places together. You can find the same restaurants, you can find the same service, you can find people who have similar life stories to your own. But when you go to a new place, let's say Thailand or Spain, the people are so different, the food is so different, the culture is so different, it can have you missing the familiarity that home brings. Here in Taiwan, it's very difficult for me to find a cheeseburger that makes me feel like I'm at home. You definitely want to come equipped with some strategies in order to fight off homesickness. 